Previously on the Jay and Dan podcast. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't you keep your eye on the road? Well, it's be impossible just to see the road. As a driver? Mm-hmm. Brought it back all clean. He goes, here you go. That was great. Thank you. That Tupperware, the other one, left the location. This has been Tupper Talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hope you guys get a good turnout here in the Jine. If not, you can blame Dan for bombing the corporate Christmas party here in town last year. Kidding. It went actually pretty well. Mm-hmm. Hey, Luch. Don't feel so sad. Mm-hmm. So I got one of those. I can uh, I can feed that to your mouth, too. Bring those over. Yeah, I'll shove one of those right in your f- mouth. Mm-hmm. You and your sister came out of the bar, and my cab came up, and you opened the door, and I'm like, hey, that's my cab. And I said, f- you, I'm Dan O'Toole, this is my cab. Mm-hmm. And then I proceeded to point out the fact that my sister and I have never been in a cab together. Uh, my sister and I have never been in that bar together. These are key details. Mm-hmm. Ladies, I got a mysterious stomach problem <laughs> of unknown origin. <laughs> Who wants to f- You're listening to the Jay and Dan Podcast. Get the f- away from this cab! <laughs> I'm f- Dan O'Toole and you can take that to the bank. Dan. Dan. Doesn't want you to take his cab. Ha ha. Getting a lot of people message me now. I'm never taking a cab with you. Holy crap, people. Anyway, uh, <laughs> October 21st. Hey, I have a... They're uh, just having fun with you. A couple of housekeeping notes. I did get my Tupperware back from Brendo. Oh, okay. My Tupperware's back. And... Uh, we played that. I wonder tech. how many people were waiting for that <laughs> information. Uh, we played that clip of uh, the event I did in Regina. We did. Well, you, how I bombed or whatever. Oh no, you mean that was just some? I, I think someone was just joking. Yeah, but message. I got a note from that. Dan just wanted to follow up on the message that Jay read on the last pod. I was absolutely kidding about the corporate party last year. <laughs> it was unreal to have you and your star-spangled <laughs> suit in town. <laughs> and then I said, oh, good brother. He said, see you guys next week or in a couple weeks. And I said, big time. Yeah, nice. Love it. Um, though he told me, this same guy, that he couldn't come to the Regina show. He's only going to the Saskatoon show, even though he lives in Regina. He's going to a concert in Saskatoon the night we're playing Regina. His point was that we announced Saskatoon first so that a bunch of Regina Ians, Reginians, mm-hmm. Bought Saskatoon tickets thinking, well, this is our only chance to go see those morons. And then we end up doing a show in Regina, which is oh on golly, Jesus. the 15th of November, Friday, Connexus Center, Regina. Come see us. It's going to be incredible. Last week, we had Stu Grimson on the television program. Yeah, He's got a brand new book out called The Grim Reaper. And he was great, by the way. We're going to get him on the podcast. Maybe oh. we could get him on next week. Oh, I thought you, was, you were going to say he was coming to the live one. Uh, I don't know about that, but he's going to <laughs> the uh, the next night. He'll be at the Pats game that we're going to be at. That's right. Yeah. Experience we're, Regina night. It's going to be Experience Regina night at the Pats game on the 16th, 15th, Connexus Center, live podcast. If he's in town, I bet you'll stop by, hang out. We never even got into it. Put you in a headlock it. again. He's a lawyer now. That's right. He's, in a, he's a licensed attorney and uh, has been for, for quite a while. And that's why he was dressed so impeccably well. Mm-hmm. He Big, had no socks on. He went man. no socks. Yeah, he's he's very tall, and but he looks good. Like he's fifty five years old. Wow. Does he look fifty five? No, he doesn't. I don't think so. I think he looks damn good. And then for I, a guy's made a living getting his face punched in, well, and punching others in the face. Not many could reach him. Yeah, there are a few. <laughs> Dave Brown did, as he discusses in his book. Gr- uh, yeah, check it out if you get a chance. The Grim Reaper, wherever you're. Wherever you buy books. And after a guest is on the TV show, we always take a picture with them so they can send it out on social media and standing next to you guys. Did you get any feedback for that? Yeah, 5,000 comments. <laughs> it <laughs> changed my life. So I have to respond with, oh, I always get stuck standing in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny how uh, people love... To send you their love on social media, don't they? They just feel very close to you. I usually don't wander into the comments, ever. Oh, yeah, right. I swear on my life. On my life? Yeah, I don't wade into that. Like, if we post a bit that we really like, um, I don't go look. 
below the uh, the bit. You don't check out the comments. No. The Come only on, co- the only comments I check every single time he sends out a tweet is Donald Trump because the comments are I can spend a day reading the comments on his tweets. It's great entertainment. Yeah, that's true. I'm more entertained when he holds one of his rallies and seeing the young people behind him. <laughs> you know, there's lots of there's always like lots of cuz they make sure like yeah. okay, we got to get the got to get the youth. Yeah. Uh, behind him here cuz you know makes it look like he's really appealing to the youth of America. But apparently he is because they're showing up there and they're very excited to see him. And they're, I guess, really into what he's saying. (laughs) I don't know if you can really hear what he's saying at those things because he just tries to, I think he just says what he wants, obviously, and then sticks on a point and throws out one of his bullet points like build the wall or lock her up. And then that's when they go nuts. It's like... Play the Beatles. That's what we should hits. start doing. B- B- Bobrovsky. <laughs> we'll just do that at the live podcasts. Just yell out random catchphrases. Hey, who wants to f- Well, you can well, yell that one as soon as you walk out on stage in Regina. I want you to just yell, <laughs> hey, who wants to f***? <laughs> Actually, probably a good portion of that audience would be would at every, excited about every that. Every meet and greet, you get the Bobrovsky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of Bobrovsky. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. I can't wait till like, <laughs> when you're ni- your 90s oh, yeah. on For your sure. deathbed. For um, sure. Papa, say it one more time. <laughs> or better yet, when I'm walking down College Street in Toronto with a cane on my way to the Portuguese men's club just to watch some soccer, trying to mind my own business. Some other guy my age in his 90s. Comes up, give me a Bobrovsky. And then you start a cane fight like they, they had the CFL Oh, awards. yeah, that's right. Man, that was terrifying to watch. Remember I'll that f- fight? give you f***ing Bobrovsky, you f***ing old f-. The thing about that cane fight, um, it was at Angelo Mosca. Yeah. And uh, I want to make sure I get the names right, so I'll look it up. But the thing about that fight is it's you could see when it starts, everyone's like, is this really happening? And then the one guy takes, like, a vicious, like, punch and goes down. And then the Joe Canes. Joe Cap and, and uh, Angelo Mosca. Yeah, the Canes. Well, the Canes was kind of first. He was kind of whacking him with the Canes. Because the one guy couldn't really stand. He was sitting on his stool. The other guy got up and just started whacking him. Oh, God. That was terrifying. I'm going to start carrying a cane. Instant weapon. I like that I- idea as an accessory for you. <laughs> I like the idea of you wearing a uh, like a faux fur uh, fedora. My a, erections have returned. A cane, and then like a cape with lined with fur as well. Just faux fur, like okay. appeasing yeah. the people, folks, yeah. right? But uh, a cape lined with fur with a big collar, like Ric Flair would wear into the ring. Fedora also lined with fur, and then a cane. I mean, how f- cool would that the be? The fedora to see? will mess my hair up, though. What are you talking about? Your hair's perfect all the time. It never gets messed up. Hey, did you vote today? Big time. I placed the X next, on the spot next to my chosen candidate, George Canyon. <laughs> I didn't. We didn't. We just found out he was running. Yes, George Canyon was running out east. He lost. He did not win. So goes to show you. Again, we've talked about you seriously running for office someday. This will probably happen. Would you agree? In the Kawartha's uh, Bob Cajun region? Is that, yeah. the, is that the region? What's your... Uh, what's I'm your, the f***ing mayor. What's your area? I'd be Clarington. Clarington. Okay. So you're going to run there. And, yeah, I don't uh, know. As long, uh, if I can get together with the other people I'm running with, like we aren't looking into any dirt here. Are we? We're good, right? We're, yeah, all, we're not going to mudsling, right? You would be in big trouble there. <laughs> I kid, I kid. You would be in big trouble. Yeah, I voted. Did you uh, Did you vote? I did. So how many? So you just had like four people on your ballot, right? No, there was, uh, I want to say, eight or something ridiculous oh, wow. like that. Six. I thought there was only six Parties, but I guess maybe there's some other fringe parties. I'm positive there were at least eight eight names on there. There was four on mine, and it's a very small polling station, and I had to wait. Where for did th- you vote? Like, where was it? It's a seniors complex. Okay, that's a good place to do it. 
give them something to look at. Oh, yeah. They're all hands on deck. There was like 20 people working. Yeah, they're excited. And they're keeping the ruler business in business. Yeah, that's true. They're always using the rulers. Nobody's using rulers except for Election Day. It's all very pencils and rulers on Election (laughs) Day, isn't it? Yeah. What are they afraid of? That someone's going to hack it? The Russians or something? We're all very... And then I... Like I gave... (laughs) Okay. So I vote, and then, you know, you go to the little thing in the back that looks like a, you've done your science experiment, and you've got your <laughs> backdrop. You know, you hide behind it. Ooh, this is Don't look so, at me. This is all so secretive. <laughs> Who will I vote for? I put my ex down. I fold it up the way he told me. He's like, just fold it up and then give it back to me. I'm like, got it. So I fold it up the way he told me. Me too. Give back to him. I'm like, see ya. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to put it in the box. I'm like, you said give it back to you. He's like, well, I can't place your vote. I'm like, well, I don't know. You're the f- vote guy. <laughs> Why didn't you say give it back to me and then I'll give it back to you and then you put it in the box? That would be the, the way to say it. Sounds like you could have really uh, taken out one of the steps and just put it in. I could have just put that in yeah. myself. Why did I? Because he had to rip off that yes. little strip. Again, why are we Again, ripping strips off? What's the strip for? What is the f***ing strip for? Well, to make sure. But you've already got, used your ruler and indicated that I voted. So now it's starting to make sense because you use pencils to put in your vote, which, again, is so weird because someone could just erase that. Exactly. But I guess that's why, right? You, If you're like, well, no, maybe I won't vote for this. But the poor old woman who was in front of me, there was only four people on my ballot. And we had to wait till she was out for me to go in. She was there 10 minutes. I have to be honest, though. I, this is the first time I was walking to the polling station, which was my daughter's school, and uh, going to the gym. And I was like, I don't know who I'm voting for. I really don't. Right as I walked up there, I had no idea who I was voting for. No idea. No clue. Who'd you vote for? A coolest name? I always try to vote strategically. I was talking to my wife about this. My wife? When we had uh, dinner the other night for our anniversary. I said, My uh, wife. I don't, I don't like to vote unless I think my vote's really going to make a difference in the riding. So I never vote fringe parties, ever. So no rhino party. No for rhino you. party. No green party. Well, that's useless. Sh- you can't call them fringe. People get mad. Green party's not fringe. <laughs> I don't want to get into political trouble here. All right, I got to take that back. Green Party, you got a great chance of winning the election federally someday. I can't wait till you rule the whole nation and we have windmills behind every street corner or something. Okay, so, but I'm not voting for them. All right. So, yeah, I try to vote strategically. I want to make a difference with my vote, you know, like, I, so that's what I try to do. But I, I just didn't know what to do today. It was very confusing because uh, there's a lot of issues I have with all three. Le- the three yeah. main leaders. No, the one leader I really like, the one I think is an idiot, and the other I think is an idiot. I'm not going to say who. <laughs> um, I think the lady in front of me was taking a long time because she couldn't maybe get the pencil to show up. Maybe she... That's why... Why don't we have a computer? Why don't you just have four buttons there? You go, boom, like whammy. Yeah, at this point, here's another question. Why can't I log on and vote from home? Oh, because you'd be casting seven votes. Well, you vote once. It's simple. Vote once. They've got, at this point, the computer guys have to be able to make it so that you register once and vote once, and that's it. You know, who's On your phone. Download an app. Vote. Boom. You know who's stopping that? The Russians? No. The, uh, the, the, ru- the ruler industry. The Green Party? The rulers would not sell any rulers if they didn't have an election. So do kids not use rulers anymore? No, nah, I've had to buy some. I don't think they use them. Hmm. It is. I mean, it doesn't seem like... Wouldn't you want to give all the kids, like, tape measures? I'm just a child. Wouldn't you want to give every kid, like, a like a nice Black & Decker tape measure? You gotta learn. at least you could... But then those are, like, dangerous. You got to use... Sharp. You got to do angles and stuff. That's why they need the rulers. Um, oh, yeah, angles. I forgot about that. I voted for someone, and um, if you held me, I'm glad. If you held me at gunpoint right now, I don't know their name. The person I cast my vote for. So you were voting. That's crazy for the party. Yes. Right. I get it. I guess I was too. I guess I was doing the same thing. Like if you lined them up here, yeah, gave me all their names, I no idea. I 
Yeah, that's a really good point. So here's the question. I, I think I know her name, but I don't know. Oh, you just said her. Oh, yeah, that's a little away. indicator of who I cast my vote for. Okay, so, so people are obviously going to have a problem with this. Why can't we vote directly for the leader and then you, you vote for the person that's representing your region? And I know people will say, well, what if the leader gets in and he's got no one to work with in his party? Mm-hmm. That's one of the problems you run into, but... Well, that is the main problem. <laughs> <laughs> because I know a lot of people that wanted to vote for one leader, but wanted to d- vote for a different person in their region, a different party. I'll take it a step further. Okay. I wish in a perfect world I could have taken one of the three main party leaders. I'll do respect to Elizabeth May. <laughs> You're not included here. I wish I could have taken one of the main party leaders put him in charge of a different party. Yes. Are you following me yes. here? Yes. And then voted for that party and had that, because that's how I wish this election was going. Hmm. There's, a, there's a leader who I wish was going to be our prim, prime minister, and he's not. It's not going to happen. But he might have a say. When uh, people listen to this, the election results will be in. Right now, we don't have a clue. We don't know anything that's going on. Uh, Lisa LaFlemme is down the hall. She's been on air since like 7 a.m. I was confused because there aren't any more makeup artists in tonight. And I thought we'd have like a like I said to my wife when I was coming in, like there's going to be a thousand pundits and people, you know, talking heads getting ready to break down all the writings. There was no one in there. Maybe they're they're already like they're already they're already on TV. So they're all on TV. Yeah, I guess that's true. Like CNN, when they have those 15 people behind the desk with Anderson Cooper. Yeah, the election is, uh, I have to say, this is, like, I was blown away by the numbers for the early voting. So I'm very curious to see the numbers, like how many people did vote. I think this might be a record turnout. Just the way this election's kind of captured social media and all that fun stuff. Um, Why don't we call up our first guest, a Canadian who, I don't know, maybe he did cast a vote. Maybe he got a mail-in vote because he lives in Utah. I think you can vote. Uh, yeah, you can vote that way, right? You can mail in your votes. I think we could have done that in L.A. I think I did do that. Hmm. I don't understand the advanced polls. I know if you're going to be away, but if you're going to be there, you do it on election day. You wait for this. You don't. Why? Well, wouldn't you want to do I wished I had done it. No, I like Get being, it taken care of. I like being in the mix. Yeah, but you're kind of in the mix. People are still voting. No, no, you? I want I want the buzz. Yeah, you want the hot buzz. All oh, those rulers clanging. I say, hey, good turnout. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's steady. That's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. Ah, it'll be fun. Hey, everyone's just trying their best. That's the thing. It, it became so contentious. A lot of name calling, a lot of mud, mud slinging. I just want everyone to, you know, every. I, and also, I mean this in, in all sincerity. If you choose to run for public office, you have to be commended somewhat, because you're basically saying, "I'm giving my life up to this." But if you're right? running for prime minister, it's kind of an ego trip too. I don't know. I mean, you're serving. You're choosing to serve. I know you're getting paid and ending up with a ridiculous pension in the end. Ooh, pension. Yes, I'm definitely going to run. That's what I mean. That's the only reason to run for political office in this country. That's why Graham Dillette will eventually be your MP for the Weyburn, Saskatchewan region. (laughs) Graham, you there? I am, yeah. I wasn't sure if I was uh, beeped in yet, so I was giggling inside, though. (laughs) Um, Did you cast a vote? Did you get a mail-in vote? Um, no, no, I'm not allowed to vote because I'm a U.S. resident. I'm still a Canadian citizen, but U.S. resident, so I can't really vote in either election. So I just kind of sit on the side and just bitch and complain about politicians mostly. <laughs> nice. Are you talking to us on a 1993 Razor phone? <laughs> no, is it not sound good? <laughs> it's really uh, staticky. Oh, no. Maybe you're in a different bad I'm part of the house. Here. I uh, let me uh, let me walk around just a little bit here. Sorry, I'm at a, I'm actually at a friend's house right now. Oh, okay, that's You're okay. very kind. Are you uh, is over for dinner or crushing beers? Or? Watching the Monday Nighter? A little bit of everything, yeah. Nice. We actually uh, we're trying to 
kind of partnering with somebody for our foundation right now. Is this going to look any better? I'm outside now. I'd say it's Let's actually say. worse, but let's just go with it. <laughs> let's just go with it. Tell us about uh, your foundation. What are you guys What are you guys talking about tonight? Well, uh, now we've kind of switched our uh, mission to uh, from Children's Health, which has been for the last eight or nine years, to children's men- mental health. And uh, it's been great. We've got a lot of uh, people kind of just saying thank you to us for that because it's just not talked about nearly enough. And, you know, with kids of our own, we're lucky that they're healthy, you know, physically and mentally right now. But, uh, you know, with bullying or whatever it might be in school, we just always want our kids to know that they can talk to us at any time and uh, that we can tell them how we're feeling. And it's uh, it's it's something that's overlooked. It's it's getting a lot more traction lately, and we're happy about that. But, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's something that's really important to us, and we hope that it, you can, we can break that stigma of mental health and get everybody talking. It's so awesome to see so many people talking about mental health, like you said, kids, uh, adults. Um, I'm amazed at how aware of, of that stuff young kids are now, uh, anti-bullying, all that stuff just didn't exist when, when we were kids. It was sort of like, let, let everybody fend for themselves and it'll all work itself out yeah. the way it's supposed to work itself out. And now it's, people are more active with it and, and kids are encouraged to talk about it. And it's just a really remarkable thing, actually. It really, it really is, and we're we're so proud to be a, a you know a really small part of it. But I mean, you know, like everybody, everyone is dealing with something, fleet or uh, anchorman or uh, you know top businessman or whatever it is. Everyone's dealing with something, and um, you know that's what we just want to get out. That uh, you know, even though life might look really nice, you know, on the outside, on the inside, we're all battling something. So. Well, Graham, I'm sure you were battling a lot of things, um, uh, mental, physical. Uh, the last two years, you've been trying to come back to the PGA Tour, and that is the main reason we have you on the podcast today, because you are back on the PGA Tour, my friend. Huge congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, it's been a long road, um, you know, a lot of ups and downs, but it's, uh, it sure felt good in Vegas. Uh, the last, those two weeks, I didn't play great. I improved, uh, you know, at, after in Houston, I improved over uh, my play in Vegas. But it's crazy, man. Like, I, I really, like, I was telling some of my buddies, like, I need to, like, almost, like, relearn how to play golf at a professional level. Like, you play at home, and all the pins are seven, eight, nine paces off. They're basically all in the middle of the greens, and you just fire at everything. <laughs> Four iron, whatever it is, you just go right at the pin all the time. And I, uh, I was short-sighting myself a lot in those two weeks and one of the big reasons that I missed the cut in um, Las Vegas and then I was really I was guiding it you know I was really tight with the putter especially and uh, you know I hadn't felt those nerves in a long time and uh, anyways it got better at Houston the one thing that was funny in Houston is that uh, I hadn't played I I over the last two years without even knowing it become pretty much a fair weather golfer and I didn't realize it and I was like holy I gotta play in some elements today. Like <laughs> it is pumping, the wind blasting. I'm like, it's raining a little bit. I'm like, I haven't like normally. It's like, boy, should we just sit in and play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have that option, obviously, on the PGA Tour. So uh, I need to toughen up probably a little bit <laughs> and just kind of learn how to kind of play again, you know. But it was it was good seeing all the boys and. You don't realize how much of a family it is out there. Yeah, how was the and reception was really, really from your uh, your yeah. fellow pros? Did you have anyone, Graham, who was like, where the f*** have you been? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're all, like almost verbatim, a couple guys, like, you know, like, uh, um, it was just, it was, it was really nice. Like, honestly, like, I didn't really know what to expect. It came up to, they had a big hug or whatever for me, and it's great to see you back and that kind of thing, and. Uh, that's when I, like I was saying, it's like you don't really realize that it's a family. Like I've spent, you know, nine years of my life out there with all those guys for 25 weeks a year, whatever it is, and um, you build relationships with those. Even if you're not like best friends with guys, you, you know, you just have relationships, and you've seen, and we're we're all battling the same things and going through all the ups and downs of tour life, and uh, not that we would complain about it, but 
there's some <laughs> negatives and stuff that go with it. And uh, there's all guys that have been through it with you from the start kind of thing. And so it was good to see everyone again. Well, and, you know, you make a good point. It's like any workplace. You know, you might not be friends with everybody, but you see familiar faces over and over, and you're all sort of there on a common goal. And, you know, as professional golfers, no one can really understand what you guys go through other than other professional golfers. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's clicky kind of out here. Like, I think I've told you guys that before or whatever, but it's uh, everyone kind of has, like, their little groups that they hang out with, but there's intermingling and there's, there's guys that, um, you know, I was really, really excited to see them. And there was guys that that was going to be to see them type of thing. But, uh, yeah, it was it really was good, and it was a warm welcoming. And uh, it was it just felt really, really good being kind of back just inside the ropes and feeling those butterflies again. So we mentioned two years to get back on tour because you were dealing with a back problem, then you had setbacks. At any point, were you thinking, okay, I can't do this anymore? Oh, yeah, multiple times, yeah. I, uh, it, it's funny when you're going, I don't know if you guys have ever like, gone through injuries, but if you talk to like any athlete who's been through things, it's, there's so many ups and downs. Like It's like an emotional roller coaster. At the times when you're feeling good, you feel like you're going to be back on tour in two weeks. And then all of a sudden you go to pick up your kid's toy, and your back goes out, and you're on the couch for the next six days alternating ice and heat, and you're like, man. I don't think this is ever going to happen. Hmm. And you start crying because you're like, oh, man, like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, this is never going to happen again. And then four days later, you start feeling good again. And you go to the gym, you hit a few balls. And you're like, man, I'm going to get back on the PJ Tour. And then you have another step back. And that's kind of how it's been for, you know, 18 of the last 24 months kind of thing. But uh, I'm in a pretty good place right now. Like, I'm, I'm definitely not 100% healthy, but... I'm also 37, soon to be 38, uh, touring pro who I got a lot of reps and a lot of miles on me, and uh, that's just kind of part of the game, especially nowadays with the modern game. It's, it's all about power and putting mm. your body to the limits, and uh, unfortunately I think careers are going to be shorter than they have been in the past, um, but that's just kind of the way that the game is going. And you've got, uh, I believe, 20 or so exemptions, uh, major medical exemption, uh, to try to get your tour card back. So uh, uh, you've got some time to work with. Uh, before we let you go, just because uh, the connection is uh, really atrocious on your phone. Yeah, sorry about uh, no, that. no problem. Um, I wanted to ask you about Tony Romo. When he almost made the cut, tell us now, how many of your peers or maybe you were saying, man, he better not make the cut? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone was cheering against him. I think um, going in with, uh, you know, like staff and him and whoever else has done it, it's, uh, I, I never believed for a second that any of them would ever, ever sniff it. So it speaks a lot to his athleticism just to be able to even, like, be in the mix because, um, man, like, <laughs> it's hard as a professional golfer sometimes to make cuts. And for those guys, it's a little bit different because they're not playing for the money. But at the same time, it's uh, it's pretty impressive, and um, you know you got to tip your hat to those guys. Like Steph almost made the cut there too a couple years ago, and it'll probably happen sooner than later. And then it, then it will probably piss guys off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Every day for months and years, and you know those guys are shooting jumpers, and then they're just like, oh, f- I should just go try playing the tour, <laughs> and then make the cut. Well, Grant, we can't uh, we can't thank you enough for coming on. And the Canadian content in golf right now is better than it's ever Unreal. been. And it's so amazing to have you back in the mix, buddy. Awesome, I appreciate it. Yeah, all those boys are toting the flag pretty well. Man, looking in now, but uh, it's really really good to see. And uh, I heard you guys are going to be in Saskatoon in a couple of weeks, so enjoy the prairies. And uh, thanks for having me on. Sorry about the connection, fellas. No, yeah, no worries, problem. my friend. Great chatting with you. We'll talk to you soon. All right, cheers. That's uh, Canadian PGA Pro Graham Dillette. Um, that was the worst phone connection we've ever had from any guest. I kind of, stuff got in my ear at one point. It was like, should we try to call him back and get him on a landline? I was like, no, let's push it. Well, he said that let's was the only it. phone he had because I'm like, what's the best number? He says, that's the only <laughs> number. So I don't know what's going maybe, on. Maybe because he, he lives in Utah, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe it's kind of the desert. Uh, maybe they don't have that many cell phone towers. Maybe lizards <laughs> ate all the cell phone towers. 
Lizards? Possibly. Desert lizards. Um, but two years out of the game, back yeah. problems. He had setbacks. So, yeah, he's back on tour. We've got so many uh, young Canadians oh, now. Oh, it's, it's amazing. Yes. It's, it's awesome to watch because every single week you legitimately are expecting one of them to be in the top page, of the, the, at least the co- top couple of pages of the leaderboard. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's awesome. And then, you know, tennis, Bianca obviously is amazing, but Shapovalov won his first tournament over the weekend. It's exciting to see Canadians excel. Maybe the best one, to me anyway, is this recent win by Canada over the U.S. in soccer. It was incredible. I mean, I realize it maybe doesn't mean as much to to everybody in terms of the, the result, but the fact that they beat the Americans for the first time since 1985, and the fact that we have uh, Alfonso Davies from Edmonton, who plays for Bayern Munich, and actually is a willing participant in the national team, which cannot be convenient for him, right? Like, in a perfect world, he's staying in Europe, he's training in, he's living in Munich year-round. <clears throat> the fact that he's got to come back here and uh, <clears throat> and compete in these games in Canada, it's an effort. He's got to make an effort. And the fact that he wants to do it for his country is awesome. So, yeah, I just love watching that kid play. And while we're on the Canadian athlete to train, you feel bad for um, guys like James Paxton, who pitches for the Yankees, and uh, Mike Soroka, because they're playing a team sport in the States, and they don't get as much attention as they should. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually. Um, you know, or you could make the same point about the Canadians in, in the NBA, though, you know, R.J. Barrett yeah. definitely gets enough attention. Uh, <laughs> um, Andrew Wiggins gets enough attention. So, yeah, but it's cool. It's it's really, really awesome. Yeah, so whoever gets elected uh, leader of this country, uh, don't f*** it up. That'll be Elizabeth May. She is the, got my vote. I mentioned the Rhino Party. Are they still around? Because it was like a big joke party before. I don't know. I don't think so. I haven't heard anything. Um, a lot of people's party talk. A lot of uh, Bloc Québécois. Heard we, a lot didn't of have a, we didn't have a Bloc Québécois Wouldn't person be great, riding though? in Clarington. Wouldn't that be great? I probably had a Bloc uh, person in my riding. Maybe. I did see a conservative... Uh, sign in my riding for the first time ever. Remember, I used to joke that I was going to put a, con- a that's cons- crazy a conservative sign on my lawn just to see if I could yeah. freak out my neighbors, and uh, someone did it. Uh, so yeah, good for you know, it's good. Everyone can can support who they want. It's fine. It's fine. It's good. I've We're had good. to explain it uh, because we see all the election signs on the way home from school to my daughters, trying to explain what you're voting for, and it's just. Okay, like, hey, they look after our problems here, and then they report to him, and yeah, just just watch your YouTube. Hey, I got to mention something, Dan. I'm reading an amazing book right now called "Hard to Handle: The Life and Death of the Black Crows." Uh, we've discussed uh, this book a little bit uh, on this podcast, or I did with Engineer Jim. It's the drummer Steve Gorman of the Black Crows, who was on our podcast in LA. Now is a sports radio host in uh, in, La- in Los Angeles. And uh, was the former drummer of the Black Crows. I cannot recommend this book enough. If you love, even if you weren't a big Crows fan and you just love rock bios, it's incredible because uh, I had lunch with a friend today and we were discussing it. He's the biggest Black Crows fan I have, I've ever met. And the, the great thing about this book is Steve does not go into any detail about his background at all. In fact, you have no idea where he came from. You know, you know where he grew up, but that's it. It, it, the book starts with him getting dropped off in Atlanta on a Greyhound bus and Chris Robinson, the lead singer of the band, meeting him there. And then it's just band stuff for the whole book, and it's fantastic. But the biggest thing, and the reason I wanted to mention this on the podcast, is that engineer Jim himself gets a, a mention in the what? book. What? Gets a couple of mentions in the book because, wow. um, as I discussed with Jim when I, we interviewed him last, he was the sound engineer for what was supposed to be the band's third album called Tall. And uh, it turned out to be a bit of a disaster. They had to re-record it. A long story. Not Jim's fault. But And Steve says in the book, I love Jim. Amazing guy. Um, so, yeah. Just wanted to say, if you're interested, want to see a book where Jim gets a shout-out, he's in there. And it's pretty cool. So we, we're going to try to get Steve on the podcast. Didn't to Talk out. about the book. Well, we, we want to do it. He's doing a radio show when we record this podcast. So we're going to have to figure something out. Maybe we come in early? Ooh. 
Yeah, that's not really enough. So you bring that book in. I'll <laughs> read that one, and I'll bring the one I'm reading. I'm reading about the uh, Chilean miners that were stuck uh, yeah, that in was the mine. A scary story. Oh, my God. They just got a tube to them, so they're finally getting some food. and so-, so they were stuck down there for like a month before they made contact, or three weeks. So these guys are thinking, okay, they got the tube to us. Send us down all the steaks. But they sent them down each like a thimble of liquid because if you eat solid food after having no food for that long, right. you'll die. Right. So Dude, what could get up that hole? And they, they're still two months away. They've been discovered. They know they're alive. They're still two months away from being saved. Chilean miners. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a, that was an incredible story. But it all worked out. It did. Yeah. And uh, you know the ending. There's Just like I know the ending of the Black Crows. They broke up. And the one guy, his wife shows up and his lover waiting for him to come out. So that was, you know. He's probably like, it's, I'll, yeah, I'll stay down here, guys. Chile, is a, it might be a different culture. You know, maybe everyone has mistresses and his was the only one who just chose to show up. And the person who wrote the book, it's so strange. They brought it up four times. <laughs> well, about, it's a pretty amazing No, thing. not that part. Oh. About whether the men had sex or not. They said, oh, it's they like say pr- they didn't, but it's well known that that happens in the mining industry. I'm like, wh- Wait, why are you throwing these guys under the bus? Wh- it, that happens in the mining industry? Well, when you're like out in the remote Ooh. areas. Oh, this, okay. Kind of like, like prison, kind yeah, of. I guess. <laughs> Is that what they mean? But this author, put, he's put it in three, four times, and he's like, okay. man, they said they didn't, but I uh, don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Imagine reading that in your mind. You're like, what? Why? Wait a minute. I didn't have sex with any of those dudes. <laughs> why? Why, why are you lumping in me? <laughs> <laughs> Don't lump me in with all those other dudes who are having sex. And then, so they uh, they are eventually going to lower a capsule down. They go up one by one. Imagine being the last guy down there. I just want to make it clear. If the Chilean miners were having sex with each other, I fully support it. Yeah. I'd go for I it. Care. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Love is love. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. Love is love. Um, That'll be my political party. I, I really want you to, to run for, for office. Well, now that you mention that pension, I like pensions. Yeah. How long do you have to serve? I think if you serve one term, you get is a that, pension. You get a pension for one term? Stuff. What do you we know, got? You know what? You know what? F- uh, any of that running for office. We need to become senators. That's where the pension money yeah, is. Yeah, and you and just that, get appointed. And that job is just pointless. Like, there's <laughs> nothing going on there. They're literally useless. All of them. Each and every senator we have is completely f***ing useless. Whoa. And they get a great pension. So we've got to get in on that. Okay. Because if they can do it, surely we can. So new leader or same leader of this country, uh, we will um, be senators if you need us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Whoever it is, we're friends with all of them. <laughs> we are? I don't know. I'm not sure. I know one of them is a big fan of our show. I'm not going to say who, but one of the leaders, big fan of our show, mm. came up to me at the Grey Cup two years ago and said, big fan of the show. I was like, nice. Okay. Very did, cool. Did that person get your vote? No. <laughs> no, he did not. Mm. So he's like, I went up to that guy, lied to his face, and he yeah. still didn't vote for me? There's a lot of mystery talk on this podcast. Who knows who we voted for? <laughs> who knows when we'll, run, when we'll be appointed senators? Who knows if the Chilean miners f***ed each other? Mystery pod. <laughs> Poor guys picking up that book. Why? All right. Bye. Time to read about that experience I had. Uh, I kind of put it out of my mind. Oh, right. The tube feeding. God, that sucks. <laughs> 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 Tools again. I have the Monday Night Football game on while we're recording this podcast. And. Spoiler alert. I don't think the Jets are going to beat the Pats. Uh, no, not at all. It's a bad situation. Um, before we take off, did you want to um, oh, yes. deliver this a very important serious. message? <clears throat> this is uh, just a terrible tragedy, and, and I sincerely mean this. So um, just a quick backstory about, uh, well, two years ago, Dan and I were in Saskatoon, 
And we were invited there by the Children's Wish Foundation of Saskatoon. They were holding a golf tournament, and we were lucky enough to be invited. And what we did was, and this is what we often do when we get invited to golf tournaments, we stay in the tee box of a hole, and then we uh, <laughs> we heckle the, the groups of golfers when they're teeing off on the hole. It works very well. It's fun. And everyone has a good time. And we usually have drinks with everybody. And uh, that day, particular day, uh, a young man named Scotty Jenkins was, uh, was I guess, assigned to hang out with us. He was just there. He was he, the poor guy. He had to run and retrieve our balls because <laughs> we would tee off with the groups. And then he would just take the cart and go get our balls and bring them back. He first greeted me at the golf course with a bag of Tim Hortons hash browns because I always say how much I love them. He brought me like 12. He was. Uh, we just had a blast with him that day. It was a great time. He really wanted us to come back to his hot tub. I thought that was interesting <laughs> but no he was a terrific person and um really got enjoyed getting to know him and i've stayed in touch with him for the last couple of years and um he has uh he and his wife Allie jenkins so Allie, um gr- fantastic curler and Allie was the lead for sherry anderson uh, in saskatchewan one of the saskatchewan teams uh runner up and the provincials this year almost made it to the scotties this year so a real star curler in the province, Allie was. And uh, so they have a, a four-year-old, an 18-month-old, and then uh, Allie was pregnant with uh, their third uh, a girl they were going to name Sydney because uh, they're both big Sydney Crosby fans, and Dan's daughter's named Sydney, so I know he approves of that. So, um, so yesterday, Allie went into labor, and this is the tragedy. Unfortunately, um, the baby was born, complications, health issues, but Allie passed away. She, um, she had uh, some sort of uh, a virus or infection, or infection or something that, that they uh, kind of undetermined and they just they couldn't get their hands around it. And, they, and she passed away after childbirth. Um, Scotty's so young. He's only 31 years old. Um, Allie was so young. I, you know, it's just the biggest tragedy you could ever imagine. Uh, a mother, uh, you know, passing away during the birth of a child, leaving behind, you know, kids who are so young, um, you know, the 18 month old, you know, will barely have known her. Uh, the four year old will, you know, will have the memories, but it's just such a tragic, tragic thing. And so now Scotty is alone. The baby is, is alive and um, in ICU and they're taking good care of her in Saskatoon hospital. And, you know, we're, we're obviously hoping for the best for the baby and hoping that the baby is okay. Um, but now Scotty is a widower with uh, three kids under five. And like I said, he's such a young guy. So um, there is a GoFundMe page uh, set up uh, for Scotty. Let me uh, just see if I can track it down here. Uh, it's just, I just can't even imagine. I just posted it on my Twitter. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, you know, Dan if you just posted it on If you go to TSN O'Toole, you can find the, uh, the direct link there. Yeah. It's... Uh, I think the link's too hard to find, but yeah, if you here just, it is. Jenk, it's just if you go to the Gun, GoFundMe page, Jenkins family, Jenkins, J E N K I N S family. So Jenkins family, Matthew Kelly set it up. So congr- uh, thank you, Matt, for doing. So that. they've got a hundred thousand dollar goal. <laughs> they are they are they're going to exceed there. that. They're yeah. already halfway there. Fifty thousand yeah. dollars, and this has been active. I think for it's been active for seven hours. So. Yeah. Let's blow that uh, that uh, GoFundMe out of the water for the Jenkins family who, uh, yeah, in desperate need of your help right now. Just, uh, I can't wrap my head around it. Yeah, just uh, Allie Jenkins passed away suddenly Sunday afternoon, experiencing complications during labor and delivery of their baby girl, Sydney. Sydney's still in critical condition while being looked after in the NICU. Uh, the road ahead is still unknown, will be challenging. Uh, Allie was a loving mom, wife, daughter, sister, co-worker, and friend who touched the hearts of everyone she met. Uh, please consider helping out Allie's loved ones as they navigate this tragedy. Uh, donations will go directly to Scott and their three kids, Brady, Avery, and Sydney. So, And like you don't have to it. give a massive amount. No. Even if you just donate like five bucks instead of getting a, a lunch out one day, just yeah. pack your lunch and donate five bucks because every single penny will help the Jenkins family. Yeah, absolutely. And... Uh, and they're going to be okay. Scotty's uh, Scotty's a great dad, and he's going to be okay. And he's going to get he's got a lot of support in Saskatoon. Uh, but yeah, we just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. And if you wouldn't mind uh, throwing a, a few dollars their way, that would be really yeah. Really so that's go to the GoFundMe.com and just look up Jenkins family, and that will uh, direct you to where you need to be.
Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, just uh, horrible news to end on. But I think Stoff does have an answer for our pension question. Oh, okay. For the Senate. Here we go. So or had- for our MP. Yeah, so the uh, pension kicks in s- after six years of service. Six. Okay, so you got to make do like two a term elections. And a half, yeah. yeah, you can't just do so the one. So you can survive election. one term and then a scandal halfway through the other one. Yeah, okay, right, and how much right. is this pension? I have not looked ahead that far. Okay, so I'm thinking probably a hundred grand, maybe. Man, I mean, again, just a message to the f- you know. By now, we're going to know who our prime minister is. Well, actually, maybe we won't because. Might be a coalition that might have to happen. I don't know. But anyway, whoever is the prime minister, immediately appoint Dan and I as senators, three term senators. We're going to need, okay, <laughs> just to make sure that we get that pension locked down, okay? And, uh, and we will uh, start doing the show from the Senate uh, chambers. Perfect. I don't know if there's Senate chambers. I think there okay. probably is. It's right. a big room. Great. We'll do it from a big room with our other senators. Like, hey, how about that pension we've got, eh, fellas? Ladies? Uh, don't forget the Jay and Dan podcast tour. Uh, we took a couple weeks off. Um, we're kicking things back up on November 1st in Saskatoon. Sorry, it's sold out. Sold out. It's, it's no dice. No dice for you there. Can't come. And uh, November 2nd in Winnipeg, there are a handful of tickets left. I think there's under 100 tickets left for that show. That's correct. So, um... We're coming for you. And then we got Regina on November 15th. Eventbrite.ca. We'd love to see you out. We're going to have a great time. And then shout out to everyone in Miami, Manitoba. I'll be there this weekend uh, speaking at a fundraising dinner. Uh, Dan was not invited to that. Nah. Uh, You'll have fun, though. Uh, It's going to be different. (laughs) Because I'll be sitting there, and then I've asked them to put a chair next to me. An empty chair, and I'm going to talk to you. Like, Dan, what did you think of that last joke? And there'll be silence, because you're not there. I'll be there in spirit. I hope so. Um, well, uh, thanks again to Graham. Uh, that was a horrible phone connection. Hopefully we, we can really get apologize. him a new phone. Yeah, Bell, can we get on that? Can we get Graham Dillette a new phone? Hey, Bell, even better, sponsor Graham Dillette on tour. Yes. Or sponsor the Jay and Dan podcast. I guess they kind of do because they pay us. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah. Way to vote. Good job.